By the way, his name is uh, Father Silva. <laughs> <laughs> number two. Oh, he's our Silva. <laughs> number 2.5, though, because number one is Father Langes. You have to remember that. Okay? Yeah, Azar, so. yeah. <laughs> Father Langes is number one and only. <laughs> Because, um, well, you, you know this. We already talked about this the other day. Um, sacraments are not that relevant anymore. You know, um, what I get at Sacred Heart, it's something very sad. My, 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 my thing got wet. Um, uh, it's very sad. Um, it's like uh, sacraments as prerequisites. So, what do I have to do to get married? And then you start with the list. I mean, you hate to do that, but you have to do it anyway, right? When you need to be baptized, we need, a, we need a new certificate, you know, for marriage. You have to tell the secretary over there that she needs to write it for, for marriage, that you're marrying so-and-so in this church. Confirmation, first communion, da 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 And of course you get, you know, oh, I don't have confirmation, what do I do? According to Father Langes and according to canon law, you can be married without confirmation, but Father Langes advises us that we have to kind of push for it, okay? Because if we marry them without confirmation, they will never get confirmed. You know, it's like, you know, it's so, sometimes you have to, you don't have to require it, but you kind of do it, okay? So make sure that you may let them know that you need it, okay? Aren't are we then therefore asking them to get a sacrament that they're not really, for the wrong reason, Father? Yeah, I mean, we so are, I, but then, then we, we they will never finish their Christian initiation. Yeah. So they will have a job in the church without full, being fully admitted. Yeah. 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 Anyway, it's uh, we will we'll talk about this in today's class. And this 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 class is about this. It's uh, it's 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 very complicated. It's actually very very complicated. Okay. So what I'm what I'm using for you is a a um it's the course. This the, this is the basic course that is used to introduce seminarians in Segovia to the sacraments, okay? So there's this, this seminary online, this is a real seminary for priests, online, which is for free, you know, something that you never get in America. Everything costs you an arm and a leg, and, 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 uh, and, uh, and it's in Spain you get all the theology you want for free. Is it Spanish? No, yeah, it's in, originally it's in Spanish. Yeah. So that's what I'm getting you. That's where, I, every time I, I teach a class, I kind of like, First, I kind of like sense how the class is doing, and then I try to find what would be useful. So in your case, is this material is from Segovia, from the Diocese of Segovia, you know, and it's, um, I, 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 Europe has, seems to be having the same problems as the United States anyway, so, <laughs> so it will be adequate. And, and I like the way it goes, because it, it, warned, it warned us at the beginning, you know, you're using these materials, and these materials are for that aim towards the celebration of sacraments, more than the theology of the sacraments. Because you already read the catechism, so you already have the whole boom. It's there. You already read it, and you went through this already in your early program. So what I'm trying to do is like you know let's let's work, talk about this in in um, in terms of what they're going to be using in the in the near future, which is which is coming up. You're going to be learning how to do baptisms next time, okay? And so all the little secrets. Don't hold the baby up, you know, facing up when you put, pour the water on the baby because it's going to cry like crazy. Put, put the baby facing down, okay? And then the baby will see his, the, the water and be happy about it. Okay? Don't pour cold water in Utah on a baby because you might kill the poor kid, okay? <laughs> so um, um, it, will be, it might be his first and his last holy water. So no, don't do that. Okay, so uh, use warm water. You, you know, get the water boiling from the... From the from whatever you you get from the sacristy, pour it, and by the time the baby is baptized, it's already warm, beautiful. 
okay? And kids love them. I, I had a kid the other day, uh, uh, we, we um, poured the water. I think the, the baby was like six, seven months. But we, we poured the water on, on the baby's head and, and the baby felt, you know, my, my baptismal font is blue. So it, it, he saw the water and was playing with his water. He felt the water and he started to, you know, get a shower. Yeah. Very good, that's, that's, that's baptism, you know. And you're bathed in Christ, so why not, you know. So, and it's uh, those little secrets and, and then the ins and outs and... Uh, and there are, by the way, if you have an alb, you bring it for next class for baptism practicum, because you need to get the feel of it. You need to get the, you know, you need to feel that, that you have an extra. I, I have a problem with one of my deacons. He, he, I guess he was, he wasn't trained or he never wore a dalmatic. But with me, you always wear a dalmatic for mass. So he, 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 he destroys the altar every time he, he, he ministers. You know, the, the altar cloth goes all over. Because he catches it with his leaves. You need to learn all these little things, you know. You know, when you go on the altar and you have your dalmatic and it has big sleeves, you don't go like this. Because then you're going to make a mess. You go like this. A couple weekends ago, we had the deacon putting, you know, they divided the hosts into different subordinates. Uh -huh. When he was doing that, he got some in his sleeve. Yes. So after he was done, he turned around and like you the host me, yes. <laughs> oh. So whenever you when you're wearing your dalmatic, you go like this, and then you start moving whatever you wanted, and then you move out like this, okay? Because you have this huge my my sleeves in my alb are like this big. I don't want it to show that I'm poor, that I have enough fabric to make these sleeves. You know? That's a joke that I that, that I used to play with my students. I like that because it's more comfortable. I like monastic owls because I'm lazy and I don't like to be tidying anything or in, in nada. Just put it on and they look good. Okay? Even my shoes are like that. Yeah. So anyway, um, um, but you have to be careful. Things like that, you'll learn, learn, you'll learn little things like that because you need to be able to do that. You know? mm -hmm. The cathedral doesn't have any problems because the altar of the cathedral is not that high. But there are some churches like Kearns that the altar goes all the way to here. You go, the Lord be with you. <laughs> it's awful. It's, uh, the altar is awful. It's awful. It was, it was done in, in, a, in, a, in a try to, to improve it. It didn't come out. It didn't come out the way it, should, it, should, it was planned. It's crooked. It's too high. It's oh, you know. Yeah. I know this because the priest that made it told me that it didn't work. Okay. Let us go for a little intro on baptism. <clears throat> baptism is the sacrament in the New Testament describes the most. It's the sacrament. In fact, Luther kept two sacraments, right? Baptism and Eucharist. At first, he, well, he held that seven sacraments. But then he reduced them to three. Baptism, uh, baptism uh, Eucharist, and uh, um, confession. And then he did away with confession. Well, not, not completely, but erased it from the category of super sacraments, so to say, and kept only two, um, baptism and Eucharist. Yeah. Baptism is the sacrament about which the New Testament speaks the most. Baptism is the sacrament that serves as a foundation for Christian life. It configures and determines the Christian person. Now, this is very important because this, um, um, uh, 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 from the standpoint of philosophy, nature is what determines you, okay? Nature is that which makes you to be what you are according to your source. That's nature in philosophy. Okay? So what is the, 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 nature, the nature of a Christian person? The nature of a Christian person, the origin of the Christian person is baptism. Okay? So that will determine your nature, so to say, as a Christian. So um, when you determine and define something, you, you give it a name. So that is why it's so important not to force baptism on kids. Like, oh, my, ch my children are not baptizing you know, their children. I, you know, I will just hide and, and baptize them without them knowing. No. You're determining a nature for them that they might not live up to. So you have to be very careful. You give baptism whenever baptism is required in the proper way. You don't, you don't assault people with baptism. Even though it's needed for salvation, because you have to become a child of God, but... You know, it has to come as a sign of a relationship with Christ. And most of the time, it doesn't. 
But almost no one knows what is re was received in baptism. And this is a problem. Okay? So how many talks do we have in here in this parish to receive baptism? Uh, one. How, how long is that? I mean, that's shameful. How many talks did the catechumens have to receive baptism in the ancient days when the, the apostles were preaching the gospel? Five years. I mean, our RCI process is a joke. A year for an adult to be baptized? You're kidding. <coughs> yeah, it's awful. I mean, it's. I mean, I'm sure Peter and Paul and the rest of the twelve turn in their. I know they're not in their graves, anymore, but they are. Their bodies are. But in heaven, when they when they hear that, cause it's awful. It's. I mean, and then and then and then you 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 hear what people say about baptism, and they baptize their kids for all the wrong reasons. Are you saying that it's too long or too short? Too short. Too short. It's but, just a joke. And actually, the apostles didn't they uh, put it off? Didn't they go to the, the Roman centurion's house and baptize everybody in the house? Yeah, immediately. Yeah, no, not immediately after they were announced at the charisma, and they had a sign, an outward sign of the Spirit that he agreed to that. Okay, we don't have any of that anymore. It's it's a joke. Our baptism is a joke. Is uh, our, our baptismal preparation is a joke? It's nothing. You know. How, how much can you accomplish in one hour? Mm. Nearly anything. You know. But anyway, we'll look into that. Um, baptism is is irrelevant in the daily life of most Christians. Um, Father, I'm gonna bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Why are your sins, my son? Oh, you know, I just lied like everybody else. What? So lying is normal. It's a mortal thing. People that lie don't make it up to heaven. You know that, right? Because it's in your baptism. You're a child of God. Ch do children of God lie? You see, it's irrelevant. And then when you try to trace back, you know, morals or faith and stuff to your baptism, most people don't even know what you're talking about. They just, you know, what? You know, it's, it's funny, but you see that a lot, you know? It's, um, 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 I don't know, it's, it's, um, um, is there a difference between lying and bearing false witness? Ah, uh, no. Both are mortal sins. Yeah. Both are mortal sins. They're different because lying is that you're making something up. And bearing false witness is that you're affirming something about someone uh, that is not true. My right. wife says, did you make the bed? And I know I didn't make the bed. Yeah, I made the bed. That's a lie. That's a mortal sin? Yes. I've got, I've got a million... I, I've got... 20 Jews in my basement, and I'm protecting them from the Nazis. Somebody comes knocking at my door. Are you harboring Jews? No. You're lying. Well, I know. Yeah. I know. You're lying. It might be for a good cause, but you're lying. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah. But I would contest that that's not a mortal sin. There's a, there's a, um, there's, um, I don't know how to call this because I'm not, you know, we'll, we'll discuss that with Father, when, with, uh, with Father uh, Tilly. But, um, um, yeah, there is, it lessens the sin, but still a sin. Okay? That doesn't, it, it, it's not, it, it doesn't, it doesn't make it go, go away. Yeah. But you will talk with, the, with Father, Father Tilly is going to be your, your moral teacher. Wait, I don't have any morals. No, I don't have any morals. So I don't have <laughs> now you got my brain spinning. Most parents seek baptism for their children for sociological, cultural, and religious reasons, but not for the real reason, which is to follow Christ. You know, the sociological reasons, well, you know, I live in Mexico, everybody's a Catholic, everybody has to be baptized. The kid is almost a year old, I need to take the kid to baptism because all my compadres and comadres are doing baptism. That's sociological. That's not real. Okay? Or, um, we get it here too, you know, it's, um, it's, um, um, uh, cultural reasons. Well, you know, um, 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 it's grandma did it, my mom did it, I don't know why, it's a part of this culture, you have to do it, and you just do it. Or religious reasons. Oh, you know, well, you know, it's uh, uh, they told us in church that if you you don't you don't you don't baptize your child, uh, he will not have first communion. That's not a reason either. You know, those are the wrong reasons. You know, you baptize somebody because the person has, is following Christ. 
not 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 because of this, you know. And yes, it will bring up all the whole the problem with infant baptism, but we'll, we'll deal with that in this in this class. But that's the wrong reason, you know. It's um, it's it's sad. Almost no one remembers his baptism and its consequences after receiving the sacrament. You know, Pope Francis is so always telling people, you know, please remember the date of your baptism. Give thanks to God for the graces you received on that day. Remember who was the priest who baptized you. None of us do. I mean, I, I looked up my, my, my baptismal certificate. And it's on my desk, actually, right now. And, and I, I can't remember it. I know what the consequences of baptism are because I baptized kids. The first weekend, I was a deacon, I baptized 90 kids in one session. Yeah, but that's normal in Mexico. So oh, wow. I do know what to baptize children like chicken. I, I mean, um, uh, <laughs> I thought like we'll put them in a bucket and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, give it to your kid. <laughs> I baptized tiny kids in one session. The first weekend I was a priest, I said dead masses because a priest died and I had to take his place. Do you ever have a dispensation to say that many masses? No. What's the most masses you can say legally in a weekend? Five, uh, in a weekend, ten. Five and five. Oh. That's a lot, still. That's what I do. I do, yeah, so, something like that. Yeah. So why do you say legally? There is a legal... There's a limit, there's a limit. Can canon law says you have to say three masses on your own, and then you can get a dispensation to say five, but you don't go more than five. Per day. Mm -hmm. The most I have celebrated in my life is 17. This uh, dispensation, does it have to be explicit? By the bishop, yeah. Mm -hmm. Written? Bishop, no. No, it can be oral. Bishop uh, Solis, the other day, asked me, how many masses do you have in it? Oh my goodness, I need an exam and I'm going to get up there. <laughs> you know. Um, and I told him, well, Bishop, we have mass at, uh, baptisms at 9, or mass at 9, and then 11, 1, 3, Six, seven, forty-five on Saturday, and then three on Sunday. <coughs> he took note. I'm gonna get a letter one of these days. I'm sure. Do you have any help, <laughs> Bishop? Do you see any help from me? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> of course not. No. Yeah. yeah. The reason why it's, it's it's a very good it's a very good reason, my friends, because the, you you can lose attention, you can lose devotion, you can do it mechanically. And you're not supposed to, because you're leading the community, you're leading the body of Christ in prayer. You're not supposed to do that. Okay? But on the other hand, if I don't marry my 54 couples that I have for this year, who's going to marry them? The Mormon bishop? Oh, yeah, he will be very happy to do it. <laughs> no, yeah, take care of your children, to hijos, you know? It's like mom, when she gets to stay up all night, you have to do it. You don't get a dispensation for that, do you? No. Okay? Of course, the bishop thinks I'm local, you know, but anyway. Um, on top of this, the traditional emphasis on baptism has been its relationship with original sin only. And that's a problem. Okay, yes, as the official teaching of the church, but it's not the only thing that we do at baptism. In fact, in Spanish, people say that the kids are born with horns, like little devils, and that the baptism shaves them away. Isn't that awful? You know? No. Kids are not little devils. Some of them behave like little devils, but they are not devils. Little demonios, they, they're, they're kids. And that's, that's not a good uh, understanding of baptism. The popular idea that is that baptism is a sacrament that wipes away original sin. Um, and there is a clear lack of, uh, of the traditional catechesis of the sacrament in the church. You know, they just, they just do it. Okay? Massively. They just, boom, get everybody baptized. The, the, the most efficient preacher of the gospel in the church is St. Francis Xavier. Everybody says it's St. Paul, but we already run the numbers and no, it's not. It's St. Francis Xavier. He baptized by the thousands. Oh, he, he was a super saint and, and everything, and, and I'm sure he did a very good job, but, but <clears throat> baptizing people by the thousands, is, is, is that the proper way to do it? In an emergency, yes. You know, but in, if, in, in regular conditions, you know. They said after Our Lady of Guadalupe came that they baptized in the thousands. And millions. They, and, and they gained 
close to 10 million over the next 10 years. When we lost over Protestant, the Protestant Reformation, we gained, yeah, we doubled it with a little one group. But she's, she's good, dude. She's the best. She's Mary, she's the mother of Jesus. She turns water into wine. Anyway, since baptism is ad ad administered to the entire population of some countries, at infancy, it has stopped being the sacrament of the community converted to the Christian faith and the gospel and has become a trademark of some born um, of some born in certain places. You're just baptized because you're born in Spain or you're born in um, Brazil and uh, you have to be baptized. What follows is, is that the church is not configured by the gospel but by the people of certain countries and cultures. When I see this, I... I I tremble. I I I I become I become scared. I, I see this in my parish all the time. You have to do this in this way because this is how we do it at home. No, uh, no, that that's that's not what determines your faith. It's the Lord Jesus. It's your your relationship with the Lord Jesus. And if you happen to worship the Lord Jesus in your back at home in Guanajuato, or, or you do it in the Netherlands, it's the same Lord Jesus. But but you get that a lot. You get that a lot here. So it's a little bit scary because it's like, back in Ireland we do it this way. Yeah, I totally get it. But, you know, Silva is not an Irish last name. It's, it's Portuguese and I have no idea. And, but it's the same Lord Jesus. Can we just, you know, it's that, 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 that you, get, you get that a lot. And you have to be mindful of this because they're going to they're gonna come out to you and say, Padre, Padre, because, you know, you're a deacon, you know. Father, can you do this? And, and you have to say, you know, well, this is not how we do it. And try to make it very Christian so they understand that it's a relationship with the Lord, what defines their faith, not, not just a culture. Yes, it <coughs> takes place in a culture, and you have to be mindful and respectful of such a culture, but it's very, it's very difficult sometimes, okay? You get that a lot in your parochia also, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. And um, down in... Um, in the, San Jose Obrero, too. You get that a lot. And constantly fight yeah. the, yeah. the money God grants for confirmation. For First communion. I do that, though. I, I, I go, if it is in Spanish, I go ahead and do it. If it is in English, because I have two ceremonies, one in Spanish and one in English. If it is in English, it's optional. And if they, if they do it in Spanish, we have padrinos. But the, for the Latin culture, padrinos, as God's parents, are very important. The first padrinos we had was were King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Castile. They asked the missionaries that they, their names would put in the certificates of baptism and all the sacraments of the first Indians they were they baptized. Is that important? That, that's, but that's a, that's a cultural thing. You know? Anyway, it is evident that baptism has lost its uh, New Testament meaning in such circumstances. Due to this state of things, it has become really complicated to live out our Christian baptism because we are bombarded by all kinds of things you know without even naming secularism in which baptism is just a right of initiation it's just a blessing you know you will get that a lot from the environment in Utah okay it's a blessing no no it's not a blessing it's a sacrament that configures your child you know uh, with Christ so so you get a Dale child and then baptism will be your windows that you put in him, okay? And that will make him what he is. So it's not a blessing, it's, it's more than that. But you get, we will get that a lot. The catechetical uh, formation for the sacrament is, in, is deficient. The ecclesiastic use of the sacrament, especially in the infant, infant baptism, has serious problems. And he does have serious problems. We Catholics don't do this well. We, we go into sacraments without going into announcing the Word of God. You know, instantly. Yes, because we know that sacraments work. We know that sacraments are real. We know that Jesus is behind the sacraments. But we, we don't do it right. We just rush into it. Okay? Oh, yeah, like, here's the baby, holy water. Mm -hmm. Remember that uh, episode of The Simpsons where... Um, what is the name of the guy Flanders? The one, the, the super yeah. had his emergency kit with a Bible, holy water, and a cross for emergency baptism. You know? <laughs> Tried to use it on Homer, of course, it failed. You know, yeah, we are like that sometimes. We just, you know, have an emergency kit, and you... actually, I do have an emergency kit. 
there's, there's, a, there's a kit in, in, the, in my living room, in a little box, and it has everything for both baptism and anointing of the sick in one visit. Yeah, so it went like that, okay? I, 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 I'm trying to work in the parish to, with my deacons because they, they do baptisms. You know, if, if, I have, if I get a deacon, the deacon gets his sacraments. No, no. I, 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 don't, I don't go there. I, I give him everything he needs and everything, but uh, it's his sacraments. I, I don't try to run his, sac his deacon life. He does his thing. But I was talking to them in the other day, you know, we have to announce the charisma. We are lacking the announcement of the charisma. We are baptizing children into the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we are not announcing the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ to the parents and godparents. What are we doing then? Okay? And it becomes so difficult because then the parents don't accept the charisma. Why is Father talking about the cross? I want to baptize my kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then we're doing an empty baptism, sort of, because we are just getting the holy water and the holy oil. But then what? You know, is this kid really embracing Christ? Huh? Anyway. The significance of what? Every sacrament is a symbol, we know that, and in order to understand the meaning of that sacrament, we need to understand this, the symbol that is being proposed. Yes. Um, St. Thomas Aquinas says that God knows us so well that he gave us the sacraments in terms of the things that we, that we need and like the most. Okay? Like bread, water, oil when you get sick, um, um, Comfort, um, forgiveness, um, you know, you know, Saint Thomas Aquinas is a genius for this. You know? And so he, he, he says, you know, well, the seven sacraments came about because those are the signs and the symbols that we as human beings need the most in our process. You know, when we're born, when we grow up, when we are fed, when we, grow, when we make mistakes, when we get sick, when we define our life. And so that's, that's, that's the sacrament. The seven, that's the explanation of St. Thomas Aquinas. St. Thomas Aquinas is the one that actually made the definition of seven sacraments. Because you know that we had several sacraments, you know, sometimes by the hundreds. You know, so the church struggled to make clear that there were seven sacraments. And the one that actually made the definition and was, was proclaimed by the Council of Trent is St. Thomas Aquinas. We have seven sacraments. Why? Because those are the sacraments instituted by Christ that really signify the life of the Christian with Jesus and the relationship with him and with, with, with God the Father. So, so it's the seven sacraments. So if we understand what the, sac what, what the, sign, the sign that is proposed as the sacrament, then we understand the sacrament better. Because that's, that's, that's the logic that God used. In the case of baptism, it is a symbolism of water. If we understand the symbolism of water, we could have a good starting point for understanding baptism. Water means, in general, culturally speaking, four things. As water is life-giving, that's thing number one. Water is absolutely necessary for life. Wherever there is no water, there's death. Um, what the, you know, the space things are looking for in other planets is water, so we cannot move any, we don't have any water. This function of water is found in most religions. Most religions use water in the whole world. Water serves a life-giving function, which is, you know, very well known. What is one of the best symbols of life? Well, there was a theory, I don't know if it's a, a stance or not, because I don't follow that anymore. But there's a theory that life began in this warm water nearby the, the, the beach, that's where the first, um, um, you know, things began to evolve and stuff. That's, that's a very nice uh, idea of water. You remember this beautiful idea of water at the beginning of creation and the spirit of the Lord was, you know, um, um, on it, you know, giving it shape and, and it, now that's another idea of, of water, of life giving. In several religions, water is used to signify that the believer passes from death into life. A life given by God Himself, and we find ritual baths in many, in most religions. You know, the Jewish religion has one. The 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 the, 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 um, the, the indigenous American religions had one. Um, um, of course, Christianity has one. Um, in many religions, you find that you know that 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 um, the new birth is symbolized by a bath. 
Number two, water cleanses. This is common knowledge. We use water to take a shower every day. We better do that. Yeah, out of charity for our brothers and sisters. In the Jewish religion, as well as in several other modern religions, ritual baths are used to symbolize the cleansing of body and soul. You get these new age people and these new religions, you know, made up and stuff. And basically they do a kind of baptism because that's how they, they feel that they can, you know, you know, stabilize their chakras and this and that and the other. And, you know, well, it's, 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 it has to do with the fact that uh, people take water as something that cleanses. And, and this is something beautiful. It means that the grace of God cleanses the spirit from every ritual impurity. It makes the believer acceptable as, as one who has washed clean from head to toe. And it has to do that with being acceptable, with being filled with grace. It's beautiful, isn't it? Because it's, it's the idea that, that, that uh, uh, you aren't going to present yourself before the Lord. You're going to present yourself in front of God. And you need to be acceptable. You need to look good. You need to smell good. You, know? <laughs> you, you, you see that in our baptism. You baptize the kid and you anoint the kid with the chrism and it smells beautiful. And it's, yeah, you're making the kid acceptable. You, you clothe the kid with a white garment. You enlighten the kid with, with the light that comes from the Paschal candle. You see, it, it, the symbolism of water helps you to understand baptism better. Okay? And if you let the symbols talk, when you celebrate your sacraments, if you let the symbols talk, you don't, you don't, go, you don't rush into the sacrament, you don't get nervous, and you don't know what is coming next, and stuff like that. You try to be natural and you know, be celebrate your sacraments in, in, in a way in which you accompany the family and this process and all of that. The symbols talk by themselves. You don't have to talk too much. You don't have to do to make a, a big fuss. Just but 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 you have to celebrate it right. There's a secret for that, and there's a little a little you know it works when you celebrate the sacraments in a in a dignified, well done way. The sacraments do work. They're catechesis. And people get it. And people will tell you after the celebration, you know. Yeah, I did a baptism last, last Saturday, and, and last Sunday. And, um, um, and we came to the litany of the saints. And I thought, what, what? well, I've, I've been singing the litany of the saints ever since I became a deacon. So we were singing, you know, you know, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. And then all the saints. And I included the saints of, you know, the kid, the patron saint of the church. The, the, the saints of the, the names of the of the of the godparents and the parents, and they were like, oh, so we are the family of God. I didn't have to explain anything. I watched the litany of the saints. Mm -hmm. It does it. So we need to be very careful when we celebrate the sacraments. Mm -hmm. We need to be super careful that we we, we celebrate it in such a way <clears throat> that will that will speak to the to those who are receiving them. <clears throat> Three what water quenches thirst, and this is very important. You have you noticed that uh, almost many words that, that signify water have to do with oh, you know, oh, or water, or agua, or aqua, or, you know, uh -huh. it's thirst, you're expressing thirst, and that, that, that what water relates to that, you know. In the same way it extinguishes fire, it quenches uh, thirst. Since thirst is such a deep and basic need, it easily symbolizes our spiritual needs, such as our thirst for peace, justice, or love. Yep. You receive water, and there's, there's this peace, you know. You know I, 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 I got off the plane in Mexico City, and, and, and it was so dry. I was like, what am I going to do? It, it was bad. And then I got some water, expensive water at the airport. Uh -huh. Very expensive. And of course, a night, a nice... Um, 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 a Mexican Coke Zero. Mmm, that's so good. Mm. It did it. You get some people that you go like, oh, okay, okay, whatever, you know. Uh, yeah. But it's it gives you peace. Once you once you drink, you get some peace. There's uh, you know this beautiful idea, uh, this beautiful thing that comes to you. Well, you don't need this anymore. And you can compare that easily to the needs for peace and, and love and forgiveness. And, um, water is often used in, in poetry um, 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 and art. You can see that a lot. You know, there's lots of images uh, that have that uh, that have to do with water. You know, and it's, it gives you this idea. And, and and just think of the movies that include 
you know, ships and, and, and the ocean and, 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 and uh, some, some romance movies will happen next to the beach and, and, and some action movies have to do with water. It, it's this idea. Water, water is a very powerful, it's a very powerful element and, and it helps you to kind of like, you know, get, get that. Um, but water kills too and, and that's very real. Water can be a cause of massive uh, destruction and death. It's, uh, in several regions, the immersion of a believer in the waters of a river symbolizes his death to his former way of life of sin and his rebirth to a new life of grace and friendship with God. There's this, this village in Central Africa where, where they had to move from one village to another, from one place to another, and they had to cross a river. And many people who died by uh, crossing the river, but those who made it were the new people, the new village. So the bishop of the village, uh, the Catholic bishop of the village, learned of this, this, this story, and he celebrates baptism that way on Easter. So one half of that, well, the, 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 those who are already baptized are with the bishop on one side of the river, and then the, the person who's going to be baptized and the godparents are on the other side of the river. And so the, the bishop blesses the river, okay, so that's the most, a massive amount of holy water, okay, and he blesses the river, and then, the, and then in the, this very African fashion, this half of that, of the village, of the, of the church actually, of the assembly, starts to yell, you know, you know, the Africans do it, you know, come over, Christ is waiting for you over here, come over, come over, do it, you can, it's, it's not easy, you have to go through the river, and it's not easy, okay, and so the deacons are standing next to the river with the bishop, and then the, 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 the catechumens are, are, are crossing the river with the, with, the, with the sponsors. I mean, that is a real sponsor, right? If you, if you have to help your, your, your kid from not, from not prevent him from, from drowning, you're a real sponsor. But I, lo I like the, the things that they yell at, the, at, at them, you know. God will sustain you. Christ is with you. The Holy Spirit is waiting for you. That's what they, they yell at the, at the catechumens. And the catechumens make the crossing, and when they're about to come out, then the bishop comes in and says, you are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And then the deacons take care of you. They, 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 they change you, and they, they, they... It's it's a very nice way of baptism. It's very African, of course. I'm not advising you to do this in the Jordan River. But but um, um, it tells you of the power of water. You know? It can kill you, but also can give you life. You know, it's... Uh, I, I when I when I when I, I read this this story many many years ago, uh, I, and it, it's it, it's, it's exciting. I, I would love to see that baptism. Of course, I would not love to celebrate that baptism because then the river would take me. But um, but yeah, it's, it's it's very nice. Um, and it symbolizes the, the rebirth to a new life of grace and friendship with God. Okay, and that's what you are aiming towards. But in order to get to this type of life, you need to die. Can we find these four symbolisms in the Bible? Of course, you know, they, the symbolisms of, of water, of the water in the Bible can be found. Um, we find plenty of evidence in the New Testament that every, the early church administered baptism with water, always with water. It has to be with real water. It cannot be bottled water. It cannot be any other thing that is, it cannot be perfume. It cannot be anything but Regular water. Why can't it be bottled water? It has to be running water. Yeah, but if you pour it over the forehead, then it running water. Nah, no, 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 that's stretching it too much. You get regular water. Yeah. You have to get regular water to the I mean, That's what they call a canal losses. You get running water, regular water. Okay. What if you pour it out of a pitcher? That's too much, my friend. Just get water. <laughs> Just get <laughs> normal water. I don't yeah. understand the difference. Uh, neither do I. Well, anyway, um, 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 so so you get you get you you um. Just trust him. Okay. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it was a practice. They they you, you used to do it in rivers. They they will do it in wells. They will do it in you know just 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 get water and that that was that was that was the symbolism of baptism. The four symbolisms of water are present in the authors of the New Testament. The main meaning of baptism in the New Testament is rebirth to a new life in Christ. That is what they wanted to get to. They, they wanted to symbolize this rebirth. Okay? And you get it, you get it all the time. You know, it's, it, the, the date for baptism was Easter. Always Easter. 
It was the celebration of the resurrection of Christ. It was the Easter vigil, which is the, the or original liturgy of the church. So, so it has to do with rebirth. It has to do with, with, with being born in Christ. A breakup from evil and sin, a bath of renewal and uh, regeneration, and, and it talks of water that quenches thirst forever, something that can be uh, referred to baptism. In John 4, 14, you know, the, the, you know this, I am like the rock that gave out water in the desert. You know, Jesus is our rock that gave out <coughs> water in the desert. And, and that, that, that we, will never be thirsty, we will never go thirsty. And, it, and also, there, there's, there's some characteristics here that are important for baptism, okay? It's a breakup from evil and sin, and it's effective. It really happens. The person who, re who receives baptism, according to the New Testament, really is, it dies to sin. And it and it's, um, 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 breaks away from it. That is why sometimes in the church, at the beginning of the church, if you were baptized, you were not allowed to sin anymore. And if you sinned, you got excommunicated, and maybe there was no way back. It was difficult. It was very difficult, you know, letting people get back into the church after having been baptized and then breaking away from Christ through sin. In our cathedral, our beautiful cathedral, you will notice that the baptismal font is, uh, uh, is, is in the back, and it has doors, has two doors, like this, okay? And those two doors face the doors of the confession, okay? Father Monsignor Mannion made it that way, Bishop Wigan made it that way in order to teach this. That there's two ways of receiving the forgiveness of sins in the church. One of them, the main one is baptism, and the other one is confession. Okay? So that's why it's done that way. This, this cathedral is perfect. The, design of, the liturgical design of this cathedral is perfect. Okay? It's used in seminaries to teach liturgy. This cathedral. Okay? Because it's just perfect. Monsignor Manion did everything he had to do to, to make it perfect. And it's, it's amazing. It's, 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 I, I remember when I was a young, a young priest and I came for the first time to Salt Lake City, I took a lot of pictures because I used to teach liturgy back at home in Mexico and uh, in the university. And I used this church as a model for building a church. This could be. Okay? This is what you need to do. Okay? Anyway. Um, it's a path of renewal and regeneration. This renewal is not something superficial. It's a true regeneration. You are made again. You are made anew in baptism. It's not, it's not a plus. You don't get a plus. What happens is that you really, truly are born again. Okay? There's two trends in the New Testament about this. One is St. Paul's trend that says that you are adopted by God, okay? That God makes an option, and the option is you in baptism, okay? The other trend is St. John that says that you are reborn. That is not just that God comes to you and stays with you and makes an option for you, that what adoption means. It means that he makes you again, okay? So there's is, this is the two ideas of baptism in the New Testament. What is the Catholic ideas? Both. Both. God makes an option for you, and the consequence of that option that he makes for you is that you are born again in Christ. That's the, that's the Catholic teaching. Okay? Both. You will find the Protestant one more towards the, you know, the, 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 the John trend, you know? Born again. The born again Christian. Okay? Which is very popular in America. It's born again Christian. Okay? Uh, uh, yeah, we already were born again. On the day of our baptism, we were born on the day we were we came into the world, but also we were born on the day of our baptism. And it means for us it means both. Okay, yeah. it's useful if you're gonna make an option for your readings, try to read Saint John with Nicodemus, even though he never talks about baptism. It's the best way to describe baptism. You know, you will see how the parents pay attention to Nicodemus came at night and da 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 da. And, he who is not born again from water of the, and the Holy Spirit, you know. Flesh begets flesh, and the Spirit begets spirit. Okay? And they get it. It's, it's, a, it's a very good gospel for, for a baptism. But you have to make that option. You have all the, all the options, but at the end, you make the option for one reading. And it's whatever reading you get, you preach on that, and then you go on. Okay? 
So, anyway, um, um, although it is uh, the fourth symbolism, water that kills, the one that is the most often found in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the, the, the great texts about water are the flood, the parting of the Red Sea, and these are symbols in which water appears as an agent of destruction and death. Okay? These are the two, and, and, and we, when, we, when we bless the, the waters for baptism, we, 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 the, the, the prayer of blessing, which you're going to work with, the prayer of blessing talks about that, the flood and the, the crossing of the Red Sea of the, of the people of Israel. And so it, it's, those are waters that kill. The flood came to purify creation. And after the, the, the people of Israel crossed the Red Sea, the Pharaoh and his, and, his, and his army died. So those are waters that kill. And that they symbolize baptism. Both are applied to baptism in the New Testament. The flood in 1 Peter and the parting of the Red Sea in 1 Corinthians. You know, both are referred to as, as baptism. In the synoptic tradition, the term to be baptized in the passive form means to take a bath by being submerged into the water, the waters of the de of death. Okay? It's it's not it's not water that gives life, which what what, what is used to, to talk about baptism is water that kills. Let's see the two the two um the two um passages there. Mark one nine and Matthew three sixteen. Just to kind of get a a little idea. You have the Bible somewhere? You can use Bible in your car. Left my Bible You can use yeah. I use the what's the name of that page? Bible Gateway. That's all the all the all the different translations yeah. and it's yeah. quick. I just go New American Bible and, and that's how we get it. Okay, so uh, what verse? It's um, Mark one nine and Matthew three sixteen. I can do Mark one nine. Okay. And in those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Okay. You see how it's used in the passive form. It's not that he baptized himself. He was baptized. And we're going to go into that and then I'll like, and try to explain it a little bit because it's a beautiful, beautiful passage. What's the next one? Yeah. We can do my Matthew 3.16. Okay. Okay. After Jesus was baptized, he came up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened for him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming upon him. Okay. If, um, if you pay attention to our baptismal font here in the, in the cathedral, and then the ancient ones, have you, have you guys ever gone, gone to Milan? Have you ever been to the Duomo in Milan? Yes. Have yeah, have you gone underneath to the baptistry, no. to the ancient no. baptistry? So the ancient baptistry of the first Duomo of Milan is there. In the, and it's the, it's the baptismal font where St. Augustine was, was baptized. Oh, wow. And there's a sign, and Augustine was baptized. <laughs> it's a tomb. It wasn't, it wasn't anything pleasant. It's a tomb. You go down into the netherworld, basically. Mm -hmm. You know? If you, the, the measurements of the baptismal font here in the cathedral. The cross, you see, it's a shape like an, a cross. It's two caskets. Uh -huh. You can lower a casket there. Okay? That's the measurement. It's a tomb. Okay? It's the idea of this water that kills. Of course, we know what it kills. It doesn't kill the baby. It kills the former way of life. Sin, you know, that it kills the influence of the devil on you, you know. But it's uh, it, water that kills. That's why it's, it's the, the form that is being used is the passive, being baptized, because when you die, you're lowered into the grave. Okay? It's, mm -hmm. it's water that kills. Okay? It's, uh, of course, you're not going to tell the, the mother of the baby, we're going to pour water that kills on your grave. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. But you know it. You know how, well, you know how it works. You know? um, and your parish is almost like that. Mm -hmm. Almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It can kill you because they trip and fall you know, all the time, but... Yes. but uh, uh, you're not getting a casket in there. <laughs> no. How is uh, down there in uh, St. Joseph the Worker? It's that big marble thing. That big ball or uh, No, fail. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. 
Kerns, nada. You don't even have a baptismal font, do you? Oh, you have a little angel that goes like this, right? Oh, uh, I think they bring out the little... You bring a bowl out. Yeah, Dios mío. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't have anything in my parish because there's no way to do one. Well, right now, he, sometimes he has a fountain going. Does he do it in that fountain? Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. How about your parish? So we have a baptismal front, or a baptismal front down front of the sanctuary, but we're moving it to the back. Well, where's your parish? St. Vincent de Paul. Oh, yeah. Where we oh, I saw it, yes, it's on the side. Yes. Eh, uh, no. And you have enough room to do it in there. Yeah. Yeah. Really nah, that's a nah. It's like the, the one in St. John the Baptist, down in Draper. Nah. I mean, come on, it's St. John the Baptist, right? Mm -hmm. And you get it wrong. Ay, Dios mío. <laughs> and then you have enough money to do whatever over there. Come on, do it right. Okay? And can, how, how about your, your parish in St. Thomas More? Uh, that's in the back. That's good. That's good. Yeah. It's a way to enter into the church. Um, we are baptized by uniting ourselves to his death. To Jesus' death, that water that kills. Okay? Christian baptism goes a step ahead. It is not only the acceptance of the death of Jesus, it is dying with him. Baptism means that you die with him. Baptism is a sacrament in which one expresses and symbolizes a total and complete change of life. Now this is very important because it's a total and complete change of life. It's not just, it's not just a little. Okay? It's a complete change of life. Yeah. Are you in the right page? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's the whole thing. Now, why is it total? Why is it complete? Because the salvation you receive in Jesus Christ is done by God himself. The one who saves you is God in Jesus, because Jesus is God. And because of that, what he does on you is divinely done. Also, it's humanly done because it's done by the person of the Lord Jesus who is a human being like you. And so that makes him naturally your Savior. You already talked about this with Father Christopher, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus is naturally our Savior. Why? Because he's God like the Father and a human being like us. So when Jesus does something, it's complete. So if you receive baptism, the baptism that Jesus instituted, what you're receiving is complete. It's not half of the sacrament. It's done a third of the sacrament. Okay? Well. Mm -hmm. um, in the change from, from, um, um, from death, sin and injustice, to life, honesty and goodness. In the same way Jesus passed from death into life without limits. The resurrection, the passion of Christ, the Paschal mystery is the model for our baptism. Jesus truly dies and truly rises. Okay? What do you need for Jesus in order to be risen? You need him to be dead. He has to die. By your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Savior of the world. We say that at Mass, right? Okay? So he needs to die. In order to be risen and be, and be proclaimed our Savior, he needs to die. And that death has an aim. What is the aim of that death? His resurrection. But in order for him to rest, uh, in for, but in order for him to die, he needs to die going to, to, to something, do, doing it for something. And the reason why he does that is the resurrection. Now, this resurrection has as a content his death. When you see that big Paschal candle that is about to be shown to us, and you see that red cross or whichever color you choose, and then you sign the candle, you know, and then you put on the, 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 the nails, okay, the glorious nails of the wounds of Jesus, five, because, because Jesus was wounded five times, you know, his two arms and his feet and his side, you know, you are proclaiming the death of the other Lord Jesus and his resurrection. If you proclaim the resurrection of the Lord Jesus without his death, the resurrection of Jesus is empty. It's going to nowhere. Nothing is happening there. You know? Why do we celebrate his resurrection if he didn't die? But if you proclaim the death of Jesus without proclaiming his resurrection, you're proclaiming nothing. Because it will be the death of somebody who is good. But where is, going to take, where is God going to take us? It's going to take us nowhere. 
So what we, what we do is proclaim both. So in baptism, what happens is that we embrace Christ who dies and rises, but really dies, truly dies in order to rise. Okay? And we have to be very emphatic about that. When you, when you do the blessing of the holy water on the Easter vigil, you, know, you take the Paschal candle, and you lower the candle three times into the water, you know, during the prayer of, of blessing of the water. You know, it's a special prayer, which is in the, which, which is in the Roman Missal. And, and, and um, 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 it's because the one who is going to rise, Jesus, has died. So that makes that water his death and makes that, that, that sacrament his resurrection. So it's very, it's very powerful. Okay? Make sure that you guys do it, because sometimes pastors, because of time, and whatever, they just... Bum, 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 bum. No. Now you really need to do it. You need, they need to see that, that candle going down into the water three times. We always do things for three times. Why? Because we're Trinitarians. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Spirit. When we teach you how to do the, the funeral and go around the casket with the, with the, with the sprinkler, you know, you don't go, you're not putting salt, okay? <laughs> you do one, two, three, and go around it. One, and you do three times three. One for the Father, one for the Son. You have to be very emphatic and do it right. You know? uh -huh. I learned that um, the hard way because um, I was training, and then I, 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 a cardinal happened to be there at the same time, a cardinal from the Vatican. And he saw us doing it at the seminary. He went like, no, 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 no. And you know how those Italians are, right? Mm -hmm. They yell at you, no, 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 no. No, 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 Okay, okay. So he grabbed the, 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 the spurges, and he went, one, two, three, one, two. They were like, ugh. Yeah, that's how you are going to learn, okay? Mm -hmm. So then, when the cardinals see you baptizing, they will not yell at you as they yell at me when, mm -hmm. and when I was when I was being trained. Yeah, yeah. So it's that is the, the death and resurrection of Jesus. Every Christian, um, in order to achieve this type of life, life without limit, undergoes death in baptism. This is what Paul meant in Romans six three five. We're going to see that text later on. According to this text, we are baptized by uniting ourselves to Christ. In the same way the people of Israel crossed the Red Sea and were baptized by uniting with Moses. It's very, it's very, it's very peculiar. They united with Moses. They became sort of, you know, one with Moses. And as Moses went into the Red Sea and crossed and went to the other side, they received through the waters of baptism which were, which, were, which were the waters, waters that kill, actually, were like kind of frozen, standing as, 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 you know, two walls, allowing the people of Israel to cross through the sea. They, they united with Moses, and as Moses advanced, they, they advanced towards liberation, towards freedom. So St. Paul uses the same figure, and so for St. Paul, when you go into baptism, you unite yourself with Christ, and go into the waters that kill the death of Jesus, and cross with him to the other side to his resurrection. It's a beautiful image. It's a beautiful idea of, of baptism. So, you know, sometimes if you can, I'm not saying that you have to demand it. Please don't don't do that, because then the priest, your pastor is going to be calling you. Oh, what do you teach them at baptism? They're, they're demanding full immersion. Uh -huh. But if you can do it, if you can do full immersion, get the kid, they get him. Get him into there, okay? Mm -hmm. Because he has to go down. He has to come up. The new catechumenal way does it that way, you know. I, I don't, I'm, I'm not trained for to do that, so I don't do it. Other priests come and do it when they have baptisms. And they get the little creature in. <laughs> Father and Son and Holy and it comes out, you know. It's very symbolic. You, you almost see this parting of the Red Sea. And boom. You know? Like the African bishop, you know, come, 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 woman, nah, 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 nah. you know, those African thought, you they yell at you, nah, 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 nah. and then you get to the other side. Uh -huh. And um, Florence and Pisa, you also get to see those beautiful baptistries outside the Duomo, outside of the cathedral. Okay? 